Welcome into the Vestavia Hills City Schools Podcast. I'm Whit McGee. And I'm Brooke Wedgworth. And it is almost May, just a few days away now. Wow, so excited to to start wrapping up the school year. So Brooke, I saw something uh, this morning on social media is something that we have done for the first time in our school system. People have been asking for this for years. You know what I'm talking about. It is the procession through the elementary schools by our seniors uh, who graduated or who went to those elementary schools. I know. It was so exciting to watch this morning when I was actually able to go participate next door, Um, even took some shakers um, to share with my second grade friends and have them shake as our graduates um, came through the halls. And I will say it was super exciting and the kids were cheering and high-fiving and Shaking the pom pom. So I'm just so thrilled that we finally were able to have make this happen after we've been talking about it now for really several years. Long time. And remind me, this was a teacher leaders uh, project idea from the first group of teacher leaders who came through a number of years ago. Something that's been, and we've heard uh, uh, parents in the community, PTO member, I mean, all kinds of uh, uh, community partners saying, hey, you should look into doing this. And with the with the senior class as big as ours is, you know, you got to work out the logistics and transportation and all that. But boy, yes. it was amazing to see it come together. It was, and, and it is thrilling to see something that came out of a, a project from our teacher leaders cohort actually come to fruition. And so I know those people are so excited. Um, big kudos, though, to everyone who made it happen and really figured out the logistics, because I know that was not easy, but so rewarding. That's right. Well, something else that we got to see this afternoon uh, at Vestavia Hills High School was their school awards day. And they have so many awards. They have two awards days. So this is the first of two. The, the second one will be their scholarship day, and it'll always be a, a big number associated with that. Today was school-level honors and recognitions, and Lisa McFadden, who's the chair of the World Languages Department at Vestavia Hills High School, is uh, joining us over Google Meet today. Lisa, you were a big part of that because of the number of students who were being recognized with the seal of biliteracy. Can you you tell us about that? Absolutely. Um, Yes, today we were able to recognize 123 students who achieved the seal of biliteracy in nine different languages. Um, so it was, it's a really exciting program it's, and basically in a nutshell, what it means is that these students are able to read, write, speak, and listen in English, obviously at an intermediate mid-level, as well as an additional language. And these nine languages included the, the languages that we teach at the high school, um, in addition to home languages that students uh, speak, as well as some of, we had one student who had done a self-study where he decided that there were other languages he wanted to learn that we did not offer, and he took the initiative and, you know, pursued that as well. So it was a really exciting day um, for the World Language Department, and we were very, very proud of these students. Yeah, it was so impressive to see the number of students who were able to achieve that. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm glad we got to be a part of that as well. Mm -hmm. Well, Lisa has been in our district for several years. So if you would just share with our listeners a little bit about your story, where you're from, and how you got started in education, what really inspired you to become a teacher? Well, my inspiration, I've always loved teaching and I've always loved loved, um, children. And I never really knew exactly which direction that was going to take, but I figured I would end up in education. But I had a wonderful Spanish teacher in high school who only spoke Spanish to us. It was one of the most intimidating times. I remember I'm a very talkative person by nature, but I was very quiet in her classroom because, of course, you know, you want to be perfect and be able to say things perfectly. But she helped me get over that fear and and instilled a love of learning languages um, in me at that time. Um, but so, you know, fast forward, you know, I, I have my teaching degree. I have my um, my degree in Spanish, actually. And um, I grew up in Birmingham, moved away for several years. And then whenever I came back, I was looking uh, for a position, obviously. And um, Vestavia had a position that was split. It was part elementary and part high school. And so I had previously uh, talked taught Spanish in the high school, at the high school level rather. Um, And so this kind of helped me broaden my horizons and began um, back, I guess, in 2002, 2003, um, teaching Spanish at Liberty Park Elementary. 
So currently in, in our school system, we're going to circle back to the elementary world language mm -hmm. uh, discussion in a minute. But currently in our school system, uh, we offer languages on the middle and high school level. So can you Correct. tell us what languages the students can study on those grade levels and just kind of what that what that looks like for most students? At, at the middle school level, um, our students can take French, German, and Spanish. Um, there is an exploratory type of course that is offered in uh, seventh grade where they get a little sampling of the different languages. And then beginning in seventh grade, they can choose one and begin on their um, world language course. Once they get to the high school level, um, that the main campus, um, which includes freshman campus and main campus, we offer um, Spanish, French, German, um, Latin and ASL. We have um, a, a more of a variety that they can begin, but the um, Latin and the ASL, they have to be at the main campus to begin those courses. So Lisa, 91% of our seniors last year took at least one world language class during high school. Why do you think that world languages are so valuable to our students? And why do you think that we have such a high participation rate? Well, I think that our community really values um, languages and learning languages. I think whenever you look at Vestavia, we're a much more diverse community than, than you realize. And I think that plants the seeds um, and as well as the appreciation of language learning. We also live in a very interconnected world nowadays. It doesn't take long for people to get from point A to point B. So people have a tendency to travel. Business, international business is much more a part um, of our state and in in, in many of our students' families' lives. So they see the, the importance of being able to have, to develop these language skills. Well, and we, we've heard before, and, and you recently shared in a video for uh, the, the One Rebel, One Future plan, which we'll talk about in a minute, that for a lot of students, this turns into a marketable skill uh, in in college and in, in careers. Uh, I would love to hear of some success stories that you've you've heard. I know of one. I'd love to, to just just hear of um, just just the impact that this has on students' lives as they leave Vestavia Hills High School with all of this rich knowledge in world languages. Uh, exactly. Well, whenever we think about, obviously, we're at the high school level, our, our whole system is designed to prepare our students for the next level once they leave um, leave us at the high school. With Through the Seal of Biliteracy program, uh, many uh, colleges and universities are beginning to recognize that for either college credit or for placement exams. And then, you know, it is also being able to be transferred into the workplace where students are able to show their abilities in a credentialed type of situation. Um, and then and, and that adds value to to their skill set number one and number two employers appreciate that and people they can take it into their professions as well um, I know that um, we th there's a student whose desire is to be a dentist and he was inspired by um, an internship he had done over the summer where he had worked with under an underserved community, which happened to have a lot of Hispanic uh, population there. And so he was able to use the Spanish he had learned um, through our program at the high school. He is not a native Spanish speaker and be able to um, segue that into being uh, useful in communicating with the different patients that came to visit there. So that's just one example. And we know that there are many more out there, you know, from students who've gone on to be Fulbright scholars um, to, you know, people that go directly into the workplace. I know of one student who um, is working at a veterinary clinic and they asked if they spoke any other language and she said yes. And they hired her as well as gave her an increase in pay because she was able to communicate with the um, the Hispanic community that came or clients that came into the, the clinic. Yeah. And uh, th there's a, a student kind of a similar story to that, that I know is a senior at the high school right now. And she's got proficiency in Spanish, wants to go into nursing uh, and is already helping at Children's of Alabama in downtown Birmingham uh, to assist families who are Spanish speaking with getting around the hospital if they need any help with translation. So this is something that's already putting 
money in her pocket and experience on her resume before she's even graduated high school. And even beyond Spanish, several students that we know of who are taking German simply yeah. because there are something like a hundred German owned businesses in Alabama. A lot of people don't realize, you know, you think of Mercedes and folks like that, but there are a lot of internationally owned businesses that have a presence in the state. And that what, what a great asset uh, to our students to give them that competitive edge in the workplace. Well, Lisa, you mentioned, or we actually talked about the SIL of Biliteracy program a little bit earlier because we were talking about those students being recognized today. I do want to mention that our high school was the first in Alabama to offer that. So now this is a um, a statewide offering. And so just for those who may not be aware of what this really involves or entails, I know you touched on that a little bit at the beginning, but I just want to make sure that people really understand what a huge accomplishment that is and what that means for a student to um, receive that. Well, in the state of Alabama, there is no world language requirement. So back in 2017, um, Vestavia Hill City Schools, we, we were talking about it and we realized that this was something super valuable that is Im important for our students. And so that's when we began piloting the program. And in this, this past year, the state of Alabama now has a state recognized seal. And this seal um, credentials our students by giving them, you know, there's it's one thing to see something on a transcript that can be a checkbox many times, but whenever you know you have a skill, meaning that you can actually be able to produce language, that's what the, the uh, seal of biliteracy is, is it is a credentialing of the student's actual ability, not that they've completed a course. So that's where the value comes into play because they have to prove that they can speak at an intermediate level, read, write, as well as understand take it, uh, whenever someone is speaking to them. Um, so it's it's a great program. We um, piggyback the Alabama Seal of Biliteracy or Vestavia Hills City um, Schools Seal of Biliteracy right now, soon to transition to Alabama, along with the Global Seal of Biliteracy, which that is recognized internationally. And whenever I say it is credentialing, the students get a certificate number and it begins their world language uh, journey because they are able to, whenever they achieve it, it's at a functional level, intermediate, mid. But as they continue to study, as they continue to have more life experiences, they can level up to working level and re-credential. And that's the type of things that people put on LinkedIn, that you to put on a resume that is um, looked at by colleges and universities um, that our students are able to use after um, they graduate from us. Well, that's so impressive. And, and just thinking about all of the opportunities that students on the middle and high school level have right now with, with uh, such rich learning of world languages and the fact that they can turn this into uh, credentialing, they can turn this into college credit, career opportunities, all of these things. That leads us into the conversation of, well, what if we did this on the elementary level? And we used to. Lisa, you were part of that uh, when you first came to our school system. And so you know firsthand uh, the benefit to students in that kindergarten through fifth grade level uh, of having world language exposure. And so I'd love to just get your thoughts on this because voters in Vestavia Hills will be going to the polls on May 9th uh, to vote on what we've called the One Rebel, One Future Plan. And part of that is to bring back world language learning into all of our elementary schools for all of our elementary students to be something that they would do on a weekly basis, just like they go to art and music and library every week. So if our voters approve this, if this is something that, that uh, passes, what do you think this would do for students? And, and thinking about it now in 2023, uh, just based on perspective of when you first came here, did that, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I know that the seniors that are graduating this year are the last group of students that received um, a world language at the elementary school level. Uh, and they were kindergartners at the time that the, pro the original program was um, disbanded. Um, so to me, I, you know, 
the younger you can start a language, the more impactful it can be. Um, our students are very capable, and when they start at the middle school level, it's wonderful. But what can really empower our students even more is to be able to plant those seeds and be able to um, start building that language as well as the appreciation of cultures at a, long, a younger age. Um, the kids are, will be able to start making connections between their native language as well, which is English for, you know, which is what we teach in school and whatever the target language is that is being taught at the elementary school. So um, building that foundation sets them up for success and future learning. It, it it's plants a seed of curiosity um, and it will help them, you know, make those connections as they continue to learn and grow. So I'm very excited about the potential. I was, you know, so sad whenever it had to go away the first time. So the opportunity um, for our young people to be able to um, participate th in this on a weekly basis again is really very exciting. Well, and it's something too that, uh, as we understand it, it, learning a second language also helps you in your first language, and, and that literacy piece, Brooke. We've we've talked about that on a podcast earlier this year. The the literacy and understanding of the English language is, is I mean, mission critical thing in the elementary schools. And uh, so this would have the potential then to boost the, our, our literacy work, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because that once you start learning another language, you you examine your own, you know. And, and the good thing is, is young people, they don't have the fear of failure. You know, whenever they're younger, they're excited about learning. And so they're willing to take those risks. And so if we can teach them early that it's OK to take those risks and then we celebrate in that process, um, I think that, you know, we, we will see huge results. Well, and there is a great deal of research, which I'm sure Lisa knows this. So she's probably read all of it, but just that really shows the impact on um, cognitive skills and academic performances for those who really start language learning at an early age, even improved with their um, reading performance and their verbal fluency. So, I mean, there are so many benefits even to me beyond the the academic piece. But like you mentioned earlier, that, that curiosity piece, maybe kids find something that they're really passionate about and interested in at an early age, and they continue to pursue that middle school, high school, and um, even beyond high school. So, I just think there's there's a lot of opportunity for our students if we're able to offer this. Absolutely. Well, Lisa McFadden, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today and for shining a light on everything we're doing with World Language and the tremendous opportunity ahead of us here in Vestavia Hills. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And thank you for listening to the podcast. We'll talk to you again soon.